And hello and welcome back. You thought you'd got rid of me, but I am here to stay. Unfortunately, you can't get rid of me that easily. I am here with a very special guest, <laughs> Eddie Simons. So special that they did actually let him out last night, thanks to your pleas of hashtag free Eddie Simons, which was a lot of fun. But didn't yeah. we have a nice time yesterday? It was amazing yesterday. Best day so far, I think because I think I was like just getting into the flow of everything properly uh, and I wasn't feeling incredibly tired like I am yeah. today. I was expecting a less detailed answer okay. so I could move on to just, the next uh, Just bit. a yes then. Yes. yes. There you go. We did. Moving on. So, <laughs> sorry, I'll come back, I'll, we'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to real chat in a second. Um, so, before we get started on, uh, on a bit of a talking about early uh, Dangerous Horizons, of course, which we announced at the start of this week, which feels like a lifetime ago now, we announced Elite Dangerous Horizons, which is a whole series of expansion packs coming to Elite Dangerous, a whole season of expansion packs, is what we're saying, which is basically a year's worth of content uh, coming to Elite Dangerous to add and bring new things to the Elite Dangerous universe, which I think is a fantastic, really cool thing. It's starting with planetary landings, of course, which just means that we're going to be able to land down on, on the planet's surface. Yeah. There you go. So, all throughout the week, We've been doing uh, we've been doing these trivia questions. Uh, basically, if you get the, the trivia question correct and use the hashtag EDGC15, then we pick you at random and you win a Gamescom exclusive paint job, which I think is a really really cool it's prize. Very special. You can only get it here, or you can get it from answering these questions. I think we've only got about six or seven more to give away in total. So make sure you stick around for all those trivia questions. So I have two outstanding to give away right now which is what I'm going to do if you don't mind, Eddie. That's completely fine with me. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Eddie. So, so the first one was, what is the total population of Cologne? And I hinted very clearly that it is on the Wikipedia, so it wasn't a very difficult question to get. But the answer, of course, was, well, we actually got quite a few different answers, a lot of different answers, okay. but it's the one but that I got. You told them to just go to Wikipedia. I know, so. I know, yeah, <laughs> and that was the exact answer from Wikipedia, but also it didn't really matter. I just grabbed, even if you could probably have done the wrong answer, I still would have picked anybody who just tried their best. Because in my mind, taking part is taking exactly, part of the counts. Yeah. So, the person who got it right was Jazz Has at Jazz Has. So we will be in touch with you so you can claim your prize. But if you can email community at leaddangerous.com and, and give us a link to your Twitter account, your details, we will send you that paint job. And secondly, of course, according to the Wikipedia page, how many districts is Cologne split into? And I love that I'm using Wikipedia for all of my resources. I don't trust any other websites. It's Wikipedia only or nothing. <laughs> So Cologne is apparently subdivided into nine districts. And at the Dreadmeister, you have won that. You, we, you chose you for that, so you will get those. You had a hand in actually designing these. Is that, is that, is that a ridiculous thing uh, to say? It is kind of a ridiculous thing to say. I have no artistic <laughs> talent. So I just basically say, we want one that kind of reflects Gamescom. Yeah. And the decent artists yeah. will go away. Well, decent, very talented artists right, yeah. will go away. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of passable. <laughs> but They're awesome artists that we have. Chart, like to, Chart yeah. Kruger. Yes, exactly, yes. Chart Kruger. <laughs> Hopefully, yep. if you're watching, Chart Kruger, he's designed these amazing skins. He did, uh, sorry, we call them paint jobs. He did them for uh, LaveCon as well. Yep. We, we had a fan event back in England called LaveCon, which was absolutely brilliant. We gave away a paint job there. We have the exclusive Gamescom paint job here, which, of course, it looks beautiful. I still haven't managed to gather a photo for to show people at home. Okay. And Next time. Uh, also the uh, elite meet. Yeah. Uh, job, which yeah. Was super cool. Yeah. Um, finally, what I want to do before we move on as well from the competition stuff. Uh, every day I'm giving uh, an extra question that lasts throughout the day with the hashtag EDGC15. Always use the hashtag. If in doubt, use the hashtag. And I've been asking if you could take one item with you on a trip into space. What would that item be? and why would you take it? So we're going to be drawing that in about 45 minutes time. So make sure you get your answers into that question. Use the hashtag EDGC15 and you could win the ability to name your own planet in the Elite Dangerous Universe, which I think is amazing. It's a great thing. Yeah, really, 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 really cool. So Eddie, I'll ask you again now that, we're, now that I've done all that formal nonsense. How's your Gamescom been? We've got one more day left. We're about three quarters of the way through. Yeah. Are you excited for it to be over? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I just want to collapse now. Especially because today we had the, uh, the our, our Microsoft stage thing. 
uh, where we got some people up to yeah. play the game. Uh, it went really well this morning, uh, but because that was early, uh, I, I kind of I peaked to. too soon, basically. <laughs> So we promised that we would be bringing the people home the Gamescom experience. Well, what you're seeing is that right here, right now. Got to see it's how we age yeah, over the week, yeah, basically. Yeah. So I've got some greys yeah. in my hair, uh, losing our minds slightly. My voice is just about keeping up with things, which is fu which is fine. But oh, I also want to say thank you as well to the previous uh, two ambassadors who just did an amazing job doing 45 minutes. It's longer than any section that I've done so far. Those guys just kept it up all the way through. So congratulations to those guys. They were amazing. Yeah. But let's talk about Elite Dangerous Horizons. Let's, let's show the trailer. Let's first. do that, yes. Because I can't just get in case you haven't it. seen it, yeah. It, it, it is awesome. Let's throw, show it again. Bring it up on screen. Cheers. So if you haven't seen that trailer yet, obviously it's pretty amazing. It's pretty, yeah. pretty cool stuff. Um, it, it, it still does surprise me. I do actually still get quite excited when I see that SRV come yeah. over and just scream around that corner. It, it is really, really cool. It is really um, quite... It was exciting that we were able to suddenly start telling people about this. Because, of course, you've been working on it for about nine months now. I think you yeah. mentioned that yesterday. If you are just tuning in... We have producer Eddie Simons with us. Eddie Simons uh, had, a, had a hand. Uh, I, are you the lead? Would you call yourself the lead producer on? Uh, I know that I know that's uh, not a careful word around that, but you, you've been heading <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, you've been, yeah. You've been heading up the the Elite Dangerous Horizon right, stuff yeah, that yeah. we've done so yeah. far. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's been nine months, so that you've been so focused on that that it must be it must feel quite relieving to finally be able to tell people about it and show yeah, people that, yeah. that just that even that one teaser trailer and talk about it. So. If you haven't heard much about Elite Dangerous Horizons, we're going to talk about it now and, and, and just do a bit of a summary. I'll ask you some questions that have been coming through and uh, we'll just summarise what people know so far. So, okay. tell me about Elite Dangerous Horizons from a sort of, you know, wide perspective, wide view, wide angle view. Uh, so yeah, as, as we've been said before, it's a whole season of updates. Uh, the, the obvious major one that we're seeing in the trailer there is the uh, planetary landings, uh, where you'll be able to uh, uh, land down on the planet's surface land down at bases on the planets, get out in your buggy, find interesting things to do there, go mining, exploring, get into a few scrapes with some uh, skimmers on the surface there, yeah, like yeah. the new uh, like remote controlled drones that we have down there. Yeah, um, yeah so like lots of different exciting things there, but it also there's all the other things that are still to come as well, which I can't say anything about yet. I uh, definitely won't be going too far with any of that today. Uh, not after yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you were watching yesterday, but Eddie... Yeah. Uh, revealed some new information and it took me by surprise. Yeah. I think I may have overreacted on the on on the actual live show because it's not a problem. Uh, but it was quite funny to see yeah. the uh, a reveal information. What was that information again actually? Uh, let's, I don't let's know just, if I should repeat well, no, it. Should, let's do, let's just talk sensibly yeah, yeah. about it because we didn't yesterday. I got silly yeah. about it, you know. Uh, so you, you so yeah, the, the, I think one of the things that I talked about was how um, how your ship will behave once you've left it alone basically. Uh, so like if you get out of your ship and just start driving around in a buggy, uh, you know, it'll, it'll stick around you because you're still nearby to be defending it and so on. Uh, but if you get too far away from it, then uh, it'll basically it'll be uh, under AI control, sent off into orbit, it'll like super cruise out and basically just be out of the way so that you don't have to worry about what's happening to your ship beyond the horizon. Okay, very good. I mean, yeah. that was... Scarab, uh, obviously... Yeah. I think David has mentioned previously, and we'll show David's interviews tomorrow as well. We did uh, two over the space of last week with uh, CEO David Braben. 
event, so we'll definitely bring up those tomorrow and make sure people who didn't get the chance over the week, uh, over the week get a chance to see it. Uh, and also we'll probably show our uh, interview that we did yesterday as well, because it was a lot of fun. Yeah. But um, tell us more about the SRV, the, the, the one that's actually coming to the, okay, to yeah. the game when, it, uh, when, when Horizons first launched. Yeah. Uh, so the, the Scarab is the first of our SRVs, we're planning to have like more than that in mind so that it'll be able to go into a compacted state uh, and fit inside the cargo hatch of your ship because then it means that anybody can add it to their ship basically awesome yeah. so you basically you can add a um like a, a, a i don't know what we're going to call it actually we haven't named it yet uh, but it'll be like a, a buggy garage almost that you'll sort of fit into your ship okay uh, which you can sort of like, like a mo almost like a module installing it almost yeah, exactly, like a module. yeah yeah okay cool so just a quick a quick note here i've just been sent a message saying that uh you're having a little bit of problems with the audio because of some ambient noise uh i think it's just because of the noise bus which we keep talking about over there just blasting things out but hopefully it should be okay for you guys uh just keep letting us know in the chat how things sound and we'll see what we can do to make sure it's the best quality sound possible apparently it's fixed now i've just been sent another message so, uh, okay, it killed a minute, so, uh, <laughs> no, that was awesome, um, but we wanted to give you the full, complete Gamescom experience, and the only way to do that is to buy having loud ambient noises confuse yeah. people, so that's what we wanted to do, that's why we did it, we did it on purpose. So, Eddie, as you were saying about the garage, it's about the, it's like, like a module, you fix it on there. Yeah, you basically fit a module, that'll take up some cargo space from your Sidewinder, or Sidewinder, any of your ships. Uh, I'm thinking of the Sidewinder because I'm thinking, you know, that's the basic starter ship. Yeah. And we want this to be something that anybody can have right from Absolutely. the beginning. Uh, you don't have to, like, work up to a bigger ship like a Type 6 or a Type 7 or, you know, one of the other bigger ships that may arrive at some point. There you go, I'm doing it again. <laughs> I can't stop myself. You can't, help, you can't help it, you can't help it. So. Uh, other things like skimmers. So we skimmers, mentioned yeah. these little skimmers. Um, I think actually we showed it earlier on in Sander's interview, but I think you mentioned a, a, a things in a little bit more detail. Uh, so, so talk people through what skimmers are. Yeah, so skimmers are going to be uh, remotely controlled vehicles, uh, which will be used by someone nearby in a control tower, for instance. Um, basically, uh, they'll, you, you'll, they're th things you'll come across in uh, points of interest. Um, and they'll be like defending uh, like valuable information or resources at a target which you're going to be trying to get hold of. So okay. you might like pick up missions to go out to a particular outpost somewhere. Uh, it'll be defended by skimmers. To knock those out, you can either take them out individually. Maybe you could knock out their control tower to disable them. Maybe their control tower is, uh, is already shielded and you'd have to knock out a shield generator first or hack into it potentially. You know, lots of different things that we're playing around with ideas of what we can do in these scenarios. So is that we're basically trying to um, use this as another opportunity to expand on what you can do with the mission systems, basically. So it's that whole idea of, sti of bringing all the other elements that are already in the game yeah. uh, and adding to what is already there in Elite yeah. Dangerous with, with yeah. the new stuff. With, with Elite Dangerous Horizons, it's just going to add new ways to play Elite Dangerous yeah. rather than replace elements yeah, so, or... So how, you know, in the main game, you have your different roles that people play, like uh, you know, mining, bounty hunting, piracy, and so on. And we want to make sure that all of those get represented as well in Horizons. So uh, however the game develops, uh, so for example, on the planetary landings with the buggy gameplay, uh, that should also support uh, different ways of doing piracy, mining, things like that, exploration. Yeah. SRV. 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 Yeah. Service recon vehicle. I'll never stop calling it a buggy. I know. It'll always be the buggy to me. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, we also had, I think Sandy actually mentioned this yesterday as well, uh, about the power play side of things. Right. And I know that you can't talk too much about power play because it's not really been, like I said, the last nine months you've been focused on this thing. I, I remember coming up to you and being like, so let's talk power play. I want to be able to talk to these guys at home about what power play is. Yeah. And every time I talk to you, you'd be like, don't yeah. look at me, so I'd have to go to somebody else, which yeah. is well, like, Eddie's which my go-to guy for information in the office, because he likes to it give does, lots of that's, things That's, that's been the places. downside of uh, working on the Horizon stuff. That's really that interesting. I've not been able to sort of see what's been in development that much for the for the other updates that we've been doing before, on PC yeah. this year. So yeah. uh, Power Play sort of was a bit of a surprise to me when it came out. I only really played it uh, when the when the beta was launched. Yeah. Uh, and that was the first I'd really seen of it then. Yeah. So, you, I mean, I wish I'd asked Sandy this question yesterday when I had the chance or the day before. I'll channel him and tell you what he would have said. Okay. That's quite concerning, but I'll try. <laughs> um, 
So what sort of changes are coming to power play that would then be able to be incorporated into Elite Dangerous Horizons? How is that sort of gameplay going to cross over? And feel free to say you can't say anything about that if you can't say anything about that. I can't talk about that right now. Okay, well, that's fine. So I'm learning after blue yesterday. Blue yeah, yeah, well done. Well done, sir. I can speculate, but <laughs> no, so I won't. I'm not even doing that. So what sort of planets uh, and surfaces and things like that will you be landing down on? Uh, so there'll be like a variety of different surface types that you'll see a lot of different variation in colour and texture down there. Um, the, the main sort of three classifications that we'll have uh, will be metallic, rocky and icy. Uh, each of those obviously have their own benefits uh, and weaknesses. Like, so, um, you know, in terms of like what sort of minerals you, you might find you, there, for oh, example. I see, I see, okay. So like, if you're mining, like similar to when you're doing mining now, uh, you're probably going to want to be focusing on the uh, metallic planets for um, like the more expensive resources that you can find there, okay, more valuable resources. How, how does that affect the handling of the SRV when you land down on these planets? Is that um, obviously I imagine it's going to be slippier yeah. on uh, I'm, I'm, ice planets? I'm, I'm a big fan of Mario, so we've made it so there's a slippy, slidey, icy world. I've still got your Mario, haven't I? <laughs> you have actually. Just, yeah. I, need, I need to give you that back. <laughs> just, just reminded me now. <laughs> Let's make a note of that. Um, no, it was, uh, yeah, it was slipping and sliding around yeah. on the ice, because that is actually a very sort of 2D trope. It is a traditional but, gaming thing, but yeah. yeah. But, but it also, the reason why it is a traditional gaming thing is because it obviously it makes works. sense in real yeah. life yeah. as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it changes up the gameplay elements yeah. of things. Yeah, uh, so uh, sliding around on that, but then I can't imagine you see volcanic surfaces. Are they going to have a different feel to them, or like pressures? And uh, well, that's still to be decided, because uh, we're still, um, like, we haven't like got a timeline exactly yet for when we'll have like active volcanism uh, in planets. So like uh, in the initial set of planets that we get, so we're not likely to have uh, like flowing lava or anything like that. That okay. it's all at a later stage. You know, as we've said many times before, uh, the different sort of uh, planets that we'll be supporting uh, will be like done in stages. So like initially, it's uh, planets without atmospheres because you know just just the work required to. Like introduce weather systems and all that kind of thing. Like have like life growing on the planet. These are all like big stages that need like a lot of time to, to be developed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it takes a lot. It takes a long amount of time. And like yeah. I say, yeah. there's a lot coming with uh, Elite Dangerous Horizons. But then there are next steps in the future. And I think already there's a forum post by Michael Brooks, one of the exec uh, the executive producer at Frontier Developments, who says that uh, life on planets isn't going to be coming in this season. No, that will be no. further down the line because of the sheer amount of time yeah, it takes yeah. to develop these things. What blows my mind about it is obviously you've got the Stellar Forge and that's, that, that's a big deal in terms of how the Elite Dangerous Galaxy as it currently stands is, is, is randomly generated. And David's spoken a lot, David Braben, our CEO, has spoken a lot about how it's not procedural generation as you know it. It's obviously based on scientific principles. So you've used the Stellar Forge to create these planets, correct? That's right, yeah. So can basically we can take, uh, like Stellar Forge contains all the information that, uh, that you could imagine for all of the stars, all of the planets that we have in the Milky Way. Uh, in the first season of the game, so like from launch last year, uh, we were like taking certain inputs from that to build out like the, like the fundamental components and like get the basic building blocks of everything in place. Um, we're now using more of that information, like as we've sort of moved things on a little bit further, uh, which means that some of the planets that you're used to might change in their appearance slightly as we're sort of adding more detail in there. So you might see some uh, features in there that you wouldn't have done before, like the surface texture might change, the color of it might change slightly. Uh, in some cases, it might even be quite uh, drastic what that looks like in some in some planets. But we have to wait and see yeah. because you know, as ever. We only sort of see a small handful when we're testing it, and it's, it's going to be the players that see, that, that show us what the what the bigger variety is out there. Yeah. Do you think you'll do you think you'll find unexpected things coming through from the community when they're taking pictures of things? We, do, do you think Absolutely, you're going to be? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned the uh, that video the other day. Yeah. This galaxy uh, yeah. that Obsidian Ant made. Uh, that's such a good video because it like shows you all sorts of things. Uh, in the existing planets that you know not every player sees. There's like one really good shot which um, Adam Woods was a big fan of as oh, well, okay. uh, where he found a, he the found the a star system that was like really high above the uh, what do you call it? Like the sort of like the disk of the Milky Way. The Milky Way, yeah. I, uh, is there a correct term for that? There, I should there know, probably. is. There is, and we're both going to blank on it, so I'm just going to really okay. quickly move on. But Adam Woods is a really, really uh, hard man to please. So if he likes that shot. 
then yeah. you know it's good. So yeah. check out that video. I think it's by Obsidian Ant, did you yeah. say? And it's called? This Galaxy. This Galaxy. So check out that video. It looks really, really, really awesome. It's on YouTube. Uh, so as well, you mentioned the other day when we were talking about how uh, I hope this was on a live stream, and I'm not revealing anything here, but like how you've already started to, you can already start to notice the differences. Well, as you close into the planet, yeah, you see the yeah. different shapes, so it's not yeah. just a perfect sphere. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's that. from like quite far away. They can like be, uh, like you can have the whole planet on screen, sort of thing, but you, so you haven't got too close to it yet. But you can already see like uh, mountain ridges and stuff uh, on the side, like when it's, uh, you know, contrasted against the sun and everything. So it, you already start to break up that very sort of spherical shape that we have now. So it's a, it looks like a definite step, step forward, even from that. Fantastic. Uh, obviously, with those with those different shapes and things like that, obviously there's there's and a randomly generated again inverted commas yeah. randomly generated world. There it's could be generated. things that, that procedures. Sorry, it's, that's it's right. Yeah. Random, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, I used the wrong term. There could be things like giant chasms that you can fall down and not yeah. get out of. So yeah. how are you dealing with that sort of thing when like your SRV might get stuck somewhere? Yeah. Well, there's there's two sort of routes that we're taking. So we thought quite early on that people might have trouble with the terrain because we don't know exactly what that terrain's going to be. Normally, if you're uh, creating levels for a driving game or uh, some other sort of game where you're using a vehicle, um, you, you're designing the stages so you know what's going to be accessible and what's not. If there's any sort of really tricky terrain, then you can just block it off with something. But we don't know what players are going to find, and we're letting players go absolutely anywhere on the entire planet surface. And that can be a lot of space. You know, we have uh, planets that you'll be able to land on that are up to about three or four times the size of Earth. So that's a lot of terrain to cover. And we can't, yeah. like, if we got, like, if we hired every QA tester in the world, had them working for the next thousand years, they still wouldn't be able to see everything. Uh, so we have to sort of think of the edge cases. And uh, so we've got. Um, these big thrusters on the side of the buggy that you yep. might have been able to see in the trailer, uh, which you can use to like flip your buggy around, uh, boost up a little bit to sort of try and get you back uh, back on your feet again if you go into anything a bit too awkward. If you do fall into something where you are completely jammed in and stuck though, then that's the second option, which is self-destruct, basically. <laughs> which hopefully people won't have to do, but yeah. you know. But as you said, it's going to be very, very hard to yeah. predict. Yeah, you have to take care out there. You know, you can't just be like driving around like it's, a it's mad thing everywhere. It's absolutely crazy. Like how, how, the, the development, let's go, go, go into general development of Elite Dangerous. Like, it must be very, very different thing to work on uh, as opposed to other games that you may have had you may, I mean, in fact, I, I don't. I don't think it's a problem to say you've worked for other companies before, obviously, yeah, 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 yeah. and you've built, you've, you've worked your way up to the top, which of <laughs> course is elite dangerous. I literally have, because this is like the this is the best game that I've ever worked on. Yeah. I absolutely love playing it, which is a very rare thing indeed. Like wow. a lot. So of, we won't uh, actually go into specifics about who you've worked no, on. No, I'm not talking about the other projects so much. <laughs> I'm trying to look it up now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, when you've even like really good games that I've worked on in the past, when you've spent like a year or two working on it, the last thing you want to do in the evening is go home and carry on playing it. But this is a sign of a special game that even after all this time, spending all day working on it, spending all day demoing it, uh, things like this, I still you like still to play it, it in the yeah, evenings. It's, right. it's still got lots more to, that, to reveal to it. It is that aspect of uh, that blazing your own trail and doing what you want and taking your own uh, yeah, journey yeah. that way. Yeah. Oh, that's the thing as well. Uh, the, the game can just keep evolving in different directions. If you want to be a bounty hunter for a few weeks and then you want to change to doing mining for a while, you know, it's completely flexible. Yeah, fantastic. So, are we allowed to talk about the uh, sort of, oh, the different speeds? This is something that somebody asked about on oh, Twitter okay. and I almost forgot to answer it again. So, hopefully, that person will be watching. I think they just wanted to clearing up on, obviously, there are now there'll be, uh, four speeds. So, yeah, so, well, there's, there's currently three. Yeah. Uh, so you have um, the FS3 drive to take you into hyperspace to do big jumps between stars. Yep. Uh, once French you're in a star system, uh, use the same FS3 drive to um, super cruise Chimpers. around uh, at faster than the speed of light. Uh, now there'll be a new speed that's introduced as you uh, approach a planet. Rather than just like dropping you out at like quite a long distance, 
you'll be uh, dropped out into a new like orbital cruise orbital speed, sort of yeah. mode. I don't know exactly what the name's going to be of it yet. That's I, still I think I've, he I've heard decided. it being referred to as orbital speed, but I okay, think, okay. Uh, but again, yeah. that was Sandy and David saying that. So yeah. it might, you know, these things are always like, in like, yeah, like with the like with the buggy slash SRV. Yeah, 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 yeah. The names are always something that changes right at the end, which is yeah. why the developers always call it the wrong thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and why? Yeah, so like things are often announced by by us and the community team yeah. and things, and we're like, oh, that's what it is, and the next day we'll be like, oh, actually, we're changing that yeah. name, and then we're always like, oh, yeah. we've told them this, so but yeah, yeah, things so, always so in so orbital cruise flux. will basically sort of take you down from like the top levels of no, sorry, take you down from the bottom levels of super cruise kind of speed, uh, and transitioning you down to. Uh, the regular kind of flight models, so, well, the regular flight model speeds. Yes. Uh, but the actual handling of that, once you're sort of down on the surface to sort of counteract gravity and everything, yeah. that's going to be working a little differently. Because so your, your engines are going to have to constantly be, uh, you know, your rear, uh, uh, the, like the thrusters underneath the ship, they're going to have to constantly be counteracting the gravity. Uh, so when you're starting to sort of bank and tilt around, uh, you're going to have a little bit of a trickier time steering. Yes. Yeah, so it's kind of a difficult one to explain. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, you'll, it's you'll interesting definitely feel because the difference. David talked about, and I think you and, and Sandy all talked about, the size of these ships will feel completely different. So yeah. even though you've been playing with your Cobra for, uh, I don't know, 300 hours, it's suddenly going to feel extremely different when you're trying to fly through valleys uh, around yeah. uh, a, a, you know, an airless planet. So I'm really excited to see the differences. And, and also, how does one develop something like that? It must be very, very clever codery people. Because if every okay, so every procedurally generated planet has its different a different gravitational effect, yeah, right, on yeah. the surface, depending on the size of the planet, depending exactly, on the yeah. distance to, to, yeah. to the star. So every single time you land, it's going to feel different. Is that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, there there will be some uh, sort of clamping that we'll do. So because uh, some uh, ranges of gravity might not actually be very playable. Uh, like if you're sort of like jumping off the off a ramp or something on a very low gravity planet, if it's going to take you like another 30 minutes before you actually touch yeah. the ground again, that's probably not going to be the most fun. fun. It's probably you know thinking of it more in fiction. Okay. It's not going to be very productive for our uh, SRV drivers that's down there right. if they accidentally hit a right. hit a little rock and it yeah. just like sends them tumbling off into space. <laughs> so basically, you have these thrusters around the SRV around its wheels, which will be uh, also giving you like extra downward thrust. So it's going to you're going to sort of have a range of gravity values still, but it's always going to sort of keep it within something that's usable still. Yeah, it's all about gameplay first, obviously, yeah, making obviously, sure it's yeah, a fun yeah. thing to do. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point of having it in a video game? It's, I, I, I do, so I like the idea of it being um, your ship's computer, obviously, or the, the SRV's computer counteracting the gravitational pull to make it just yeah. work correctly yeah. in that environment. Um, but yeah, I think obviously I, I'm, I'm incredibly excited for Elite Dangerous Horizons, and we can't wait to be able to show you more further down the line. Um, I, I, I mean, uh, at the moment we both don't know when that's going to be. Don't know when that's going to be. Uh, yeah, so we don't have to say, but when we do, we just want to make sure it's the perfectly polished thing to be able to show to you so we yeah. know it's going to make you the most excited. So definitely do keep your eyes on the Elite Dangerous Twitter for that kind of thing. So before we go to a little bit of a break, we're coming back in about 15 minutes time to do the final giveaway of the day, which of course will be uh, this, the chance to name a planet. So you've yeah. got about 15 more minutes to answer the question, which would be if you could take only one item with you on a trip into space, what would that item be and why would you take it? Use the hashtag EDGC15 to answer that question. And you might be chosen as the winner of the ability to name your own planet, which I think is super, super cool. So but before we go, we also do have our last bit of trivia questions. This is where it gets confusing when you have two questions going off at once. Yeah. This one is a separate one. This one is to win the Gamescom-specific paint job, which you can only get in Cologne or by answering this next question. So the last question is Cologne-themed again. When did construction start on the Cologne Cathedral? When did construction start on the Cologne Cathedral? The big giant one, the one with two spires. So use the hashtag EDGC15, and we'll come back after the break in about 15 minutes' time. We'll have the winners for both of those. We'll have the sign-off, and we'll tell you all about what we're doing tomorrow. So thanks very much, and thank you, Eddie, again. We'll probably see Eddie again tomorrow and do another, yeah. uh, another roundup of all the events. So cheers, we'll see you after the break.